Now, before we begin this series, I do want to make a couple notes um, ahead of time so you understand what you can expect out of this series. Um, most importantly, this series is going to be exclusively focused on lighting, and that is creating professional, great-looking lighting uh, for interiors. Uh, so in this case, we're going to be using an ArcViz scene to do this. Uh, what we won't be covering is the actual process of importing your assets, um, so that is going through the whole DCC pipeline. We're not going to cover that in this series. Uh, what we will cover, though, is actually modifying those assets in Engine to get the best results that you can. Uh, we won't focus on material setups, the caveat being that you actually see how we set up kind of an emissive material for kind of our faux uh, baseboard lighting in a little bit. Um, but it's mostly exclusively focused on getting the best lighting results that you can. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. So to cover what our scene is, uh, it's a very basic interior. If I fly around here, you can see that we've got kind of a, a bedroom, living room, kitchen, and then a foyer set up here. Um, this is the scene that we're going to be working with. Now, um, as I had mentioned a little bit earlier too, some of the assets in here are from Marketplace content. Some of them are things that we created. The point being that we're, we're going to have a mix of different setups that have come in. Um, and again, we're going to tweak this so we can get the lighting results that we want to without having to touch our external program. So to start with, there are going to be five key things that we need to have set up before we even start to touch our lighting. First thing being our neutralized post-processing volume, our light mass importance volume, our light mass portals, reflection captures, and finally, we're going to go through and check all of our uh, light map densities and adjust those so we can get a really good bake. So the first thing we're going to start with is our uh, post-processing volume. So over here, I can just go in and type in post-processing volume, drag it into the scene. I already have one in the scene, so I'll show you, but this is how we add it. And in here, there are a few settings that are very, very critical for us to set up. Now, if you recall, I said this is a neutral post-processing volume. All of our color grading and everything will occur at the very, very end. It's important as you're going through um, lighting your scene that you start with something neutral. Don't try to add all these special effects up front. It's just going to mess with you and make it a really difficult time to get all your lighting correct. So with this post-processing volume, the things that I want to have set up ahead of time um, to neutralize it are the following. So under exposure, we're going to set our exposure compensation to zero min EV and max EV to one. So also make sure it doesn't ramp up and down and start overexposing or underexposing to compensate. We'll scroll down into our film and underneath our slow, uh, slope, toe, and shoulder, slope will be 0.6, toe 0.5, shoulder 0.25. Uh, where these numbers come from, um, there's actually a video I just recently published for um, upgrading Ford, I think 22 and above, where they changed some tone mapper stuff. Long story short, if you set these, it'll help you with the contrast in your scene to back, bring it back to a neutral setting. Um, and the second to last thing we want to do is make sure our ambient occlusion, take the intensity down, and our radius, um, decrease that as well. Uh, I'll show this a little bit later where that affects, but um, by default values, you definitely want a little bit lower than what it is. And then finally, the last thing is make sure we have our post-processing volume enabled and set to infinite extent unbound. So if you look here, this is actually our post-processing volume in the scene, this kind of yellow box. Um, by setting infinite extents, it makes sure everything um, takes effect with this so you don't have to be inside that volume. So that's our post-processing volume. The next thing that we want to add in here is our light mass importance volume. So if I go back over into my modes panel and type in light mass, there's this light mass importance volume. Now what this is going to do is tell the engine anything that's contained inside of this box, uh, this is what I want you to render. So it'll calculate all your lighting with everything inside. So I've already added this, you can just simply drag it in there. But if I zoom out, you can see it's this yellow box that's around it. Now it fully encompasses everything that's inside of here. So again, when it comes time for us to bake our lighting, which we'll be doing quite often, uh, this volume will tell the engine, hey, just bake everything that's inside of this, ignore everything outside of this. So it'll make your rendering times a little bit faster. Okay, the next thing that we want to add are light mass portals. Now what these do is by default, so for example, we have these windows which has um, a plane on it. 
for our glass. Now, the engine seem, uh, sees that as solid geometry, so in order for us to allow light to pass through and bake, we have to add what are called light mass portals. So if I drag one of these in here, you can see, yeah, let's, let's drag it in so it, there we go. No clue why it's snapping off there, but if I drag this over to here, what we really need to do with these is just scale them to the size of our windows. So move them, get them in place, um, so it tells the engine again, hey, this is a window, go ahead and pass through it. Now you can scale these just slightly over, and it will still remember that that geometry is there as a shadow caster, but general rule of thumb is try to make them as tight to the window as possible. So I'll go ahead and hide these. So I've already done that for all of our base windows and for all of our top windows. So you can see we've got our light mass portals there. All right, the next thing that we need to do is make sure that we have reflection captures in our scene. This is very, very important. Um, all of your reflective surfaces are things that are um, less rough, so more shiny. Um, that is how they're going to reflect the environment. So to do that, I can just simply type in sphere for sphere reflection capture. Now this is going to be the cheapest type of reflection capture, um, so I do recommend those, uh, but you can do, there are other ones, so if I type in reflection, you can see we have box, um, and we've also got planar, which are a little bit more expensive, but again, for the purposes of this demonstration, we just need some reflections in there, so spheres will work just fine. Now, a couple rule of thumbs with these. If you can see when I dragged it in there, it's quite large. Um, so this is going to encompass the whole scene. From the point where this is placed, that's where the reflection is going to take place. So for the things that are close here, that reflection capture will look really well. But if I fly down here, you can see that I'm pretty far away from where that capture is going to take place. So to get around this and actually make our scene look much better, I'm going to place a few of these. So I'm going to move this in and I'm going to drag his influence radius down. Let's take it to about 600 and we'll zoom out a little bit to see. Okay, so that's pretty good. It encompasses most of um, this area. Now all I need to do is duplicate this. So I can hold down Alt and drag off and that will duplicate it, or you can right click. You can also do, um, I think it's, yeah, edit and then duplicate or press Control W. Doesn't matter, all we're doing is we're simply just pasting a few of these. So there's our four, which should encompass it. We'll put one back here in the bedroom as well. And then I think we also need one in the foyer. So move this guy, and there we go. So now our entire scene should have enough reflection captures. Now they will work themselves out automatically which one should be reflecting nearest surfaces. Okay, and then finally the last thing, um, and this is probably the most critical step of all, is checking our light, uh, light map UV densities. Now when you bring in an asset, there's two things that occur. One is the UVs. So for example, if I take a look at this, this table right here, I'm going to pull this over, and I go to its UV channel zero. So this is how this uh, particular asset was authored. So these are the UVs that correspond with texture space. But in Unreal, when you import it, it creates a secondary set of UVs. Now you can, you can override these or you can have it automatically create. Typically automatic is just fine, but it creates the secondary UVs. So your UV channel one, and this corresponds specifically to your light mapping. Now what that means is, and you see later, when we go to bake our lighting, this is where the lighting information is stored. It's not stored in the texture. It's stored in the secondary UV channels. And with that, every single asset has in there, uh, let me see if I can find it here quickly. Um, right here, light map resolution. So every single asset has its own individual light map resolution that you can override, but you can also do it when it's in your scene, which is what we're gonna do now. So to check this, now I guess I should say, why this is so important is if we have too low of resolution, our lighting is going to look blotchy. It's going to look very um, low resolution. You might notice some spots. We don't want that. Of course, the flip side of this is we don't want it so dense that it's got this really rich, beautiful lighting, but we're having to load essentially these light textures, a ton of them. So we want to find that happy medium. So how do you do that? So if we go up underneath this tab, which I'm currently in unlit mode, and I go to optimization view modes, light map density, and I check this. This is exactly what I was talking about. So you can see we have a mix. Now what do the colors mean? So starting at blue and working our way through the gradation to red. So you got blue to green to orange to red is our density. So you can see this kind of represented if I take a look here on the floor. 
So this particular floor piece has a much lower light map resolution than this one beside it. So what that means is when I go to bake my lighting, anything that's baked, um, all the lighting that's calculated for this one is going to be much lower resolution than say for example, this one. For ArcViz, I can tell you that you want to push your light maps to the higher end of that spectrum. So for example, um, my floors, my ceilings, where I'm gonna have a lot of shadows, a lot of contact stuff, I want higher resolution. So how do we do that? There's two ways we can do it. We can actually go into the asset. So if I bring in my, my table over here again, inside the asset, we can actually override the light map resolution here, which is great. It'll propagate to all the assets in the scene. That's one way. A second way is actually in our scene, we can go underneath our lighting tab. So if you expand it, and there's this override light map resolution. So I can drag this up until it gets to a scale, which in the case green, or I can keep going and push it more towards the orange. So ideally, and I know this from kind of testing, orange is where I want to be for my ArcViz because it gives me the best lighting, but it's still, it will create a few, uh, few additional textures for light maps, but it'll give me the best visual results. And that's ultimately what I'm going for. One other note that I want to make on here is um, your light map resolution doesn't have to be square. So for example, it doesn't have to be 64, 128, 256, 512. That doesn't matter. What the engine is going to do is when it comes time to bake the lighting, it's going to assemble all these different pieces and it's going to cluster them together in what's called an atlas. So it's going to take those pieces, fit them, so they have their matching um, uh light map resolution, and it's gonna fit them all within that texture space. So with that, my recommendation is just go through here and get it to um, a place where you're really happy with it. And then easiest thing is just to kind of zoom in a little bit. So we can see here we've got the nice resolution. This is a little bit low, so just take this, drag it up to where the grid starts to match. Doesn't have to be perfect, but pretty close. There we go. So that's, that's kind of the first five things that we need to have set up with our scene. Um, in order for us to get really good high quality baking results, but then also make sure that our light is visible um, and everything is set up. So again, to recall, set up your neutral post-processing volume, the light mass importance volume, light mass portals, your reflection captures, and then finally set your light map UV densities. And with that, we're ready for part two now, where we can actually start going in and lighting the scene.